Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Dark Matter Knits podcast. I'm your host, Elizabeth Green Musselman. This is episode 23, Stepping Up the Game, and it's January, well, when I first recorded this, it was January 9th, 2015. Today, it is January 12th, 2015. I recorded this episode on Friday of last week and tried to put it together and post it, and it was not working. And I finally just gave up on putting it up onto iTunes and I just put it up onto YouTube and discovered after days of trying to get it up onto YouTube that the sound cuts out three minutes in. Awesome. (laughs) One of these days I'm going to have someone show me how to do this easily, this recording of the video thing and posting it. I don't seem to quite have mastered this yet. But anyway, you are not here to hear me complain about recording video. You are here to hear about knitting. So let's talk about it, shall we? So the theme for this week is stepping up the game, which is uh, really kind of my um, attempt at a, a New Year's resolution sort of thing. And just thinking about, you know, what I'd like to accomplish in the next year and, uh, you know, maybe prodding you to think about it a little bit if you haven't already. And to show you some things, uh, particularly a book review that I'm going to get to later that, uh, you know, I think really kind of steps up the game in terms of, of knitting techniques. So, um, so yeah, that's what we're going to talk about today. And I'll have a little technique segment at the end, which recorded just fine and has been up for several days, actually. <laughs> so that's all there. It's already there up on YouTube if you want to see it. And I will try to get it at the end of this onto YouTube as well. iTunes, iTunes as well. It's a uh, technique segment about how to work a smoother bind off edge when um, you have to bind off several stitches on subsequent rows, like on a neckline or a armhole or something like that. So some announcement-y things to get started with. Uh, We had a number of drawings that concluded this week. Uh, one of them was for the Pesto Shawl, which is by Allison Lo Cicero. She, you, may met, you may remember that I knit that shawl in October House Fiber Arts yarn. That was the kind of uh, light burnt orange color. And uh, I really loved it. Um, and the, the designer contacted me and said that I could give away a copy of the pattern, which was very nice of her. So I drew a a number from the the people who entered for the giveaway and Melissa of Melissa Knits from Kansas won that pattern and she said she wants to knit this shawl in a lime green color which I think it would be gorgeous in the original it's called the pesto shawl because the original I think it's called this because it's knit in this really gorgeous uh, kind of semi-solid kettle dyed green that really does look like pesto it's very pretty And in fact, I may need to knit another one for myself in green (laughs) because uh, when I, over Christmas, my parents were here and I had knit my mother a Magrathea in this beautiful uh, kind of chain linked or chain plied red yarn. And it's a, Magrathea is a, it's one of those scarf shaped shawl patterns. It's kind of long and narrow and it's designed by the person who does all of these. (laughs) Oh dear, I'm blanking on her name. She's German. Anyway, the Magrathia, I knit one for her and she, uh, she loves it. I don't think she had had ever had a shawl that was that shape before. And she kind of discovered a love for that style. So she saw my pesto shawl and was ooing and aahing over it. She wasn't angling for it by any means, but I had to give it to her. So now she has it and I need another one. <laughs> um, so congratulations, congratulations, Melissa, on winning that. And then the other giveaway that we had from a previous episode was Mzanzi South Africa on My Needles, a book by Sally Jane Cameron, which I also love. And this book uh, went to Rhonda or Waipahu on Ravelry. And she said that her, I asked people to talk about, to enter the giveaway, you had to talk about what is, what is the place that inspires you to knit? And Rhonda, who grew up in Hawaii, said that it was 
it was back home in Hawaii that inspires her most, under a coconut tree overlooking a white sand beach. That does sound lovely. And I decided, because I realized uh, as I was starting to record this podcast that two significant things had happened as far as the podcast goes. One of them is that I am less than a week away from my one year Potterversary. So before the next time I record, I will have passed the one year mark since I began recording this podcast, which is very cool. I, I looked it up, I recorded the first one or posted the first one on January 18th, 2014. So in honor of that, and the fact that I just realized that we passed the 1000 member mark in the Ravelry group, I uh, just decided to give away some additional prizes. So what I did was I took all of the people who were members as of the time that I did the drawing on Friday. So I think there were something like 1017 members at that point. Um, and I just I had a few prizes that I wanted to give away. And so I've actually already contacted them because I thought, you know, I thought this was going up on Friday. So the first person who won a prize was Susan Q. Nitz from Massachusetts. She's member number 632. Sorry, I've got a few things tangled together here. And this prize is actually from another viewer. So nice. It is two skeins of Volmeisa. And it is in the Birkenlinde colorway. I'm not sure what that means in German. Auf Deutsch. But it's a lovely uh, black and white and, and a little bit of gray where they blend together colorway. I think it's variegated. I don't think it's self-striping. And uh, it's gorgeous. A, a really lovely viewer who asked to remain anonymous sent this to me. And she said I could either keep it or give it away. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to wipe my nose on it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't actually... I'm not, I'm not sick. <laughs> uh... Anyways, a very lovely viewer sent this to me and said I could keep it or give it away, and I really was tempted to keep it, but knowing how much work knitting I have to do over the next, really, year, <laughs> I just thought, this needs to go to somebody who could use it sooner than that. And you don't have to use it sooner than that, but, you know, there's always more yarn. So isn't that pretty? So nice. Thank you, you know who you are, for the very nice donation. So that goes to Susan Q. Nitz. Uh, I also am giving away to Do Creative Things from Illinois, who is member 290. Some lovely, uh, oh, what is this? Mohair, alpaca, and merino. It is mostly mohair. And this is from the unfortunately now defunct or gone Texas Fiber Mill. So it was one of the last you know, remaining fiber mills in the US. I think it was the only one in Texas at that point. Now it's closed, unfortunately. But they uh, milled this yarn from Texas mohair goats. Texas, as it turns out, is one of the largest producers of mohair in the world. And it's really pretty. I used to teach classes for them, and uh, she gave this to me to design something with, and then they went out of business, and it just never got off the ground. So it's about 500 yards of a sport weight, mostly mohair. Also very pretty, and I will not touch that to my nose. <laughs> and finally, I have a, uh, a kit. I don't have it on me. Uh, but I am going to give away a Kung Fu Knits kit to uh, Allison Guiney, who is member number 51. And it's very funny that she won, and for reasons I will tell you in a second. But I have these kits that are uh, a copy of my book, signed copy, uh, Kung Fu Knits, and um, and then all the materials that you need besides the yarn and needles to make the nunchucks and the throwing stars in the book. So you need a few little notions and extra bits to make it. So I, I thought the kits would be a nice way of, you can really make the nunchucks and throwing stars out of scraps of worsted weight from your, from your stash. So I thought, well, this would be a nice way to kind of have everything that you need already to make the toys from the book. So uh, it's got polyfill so that you can stuff the nunchucks and the throwing stars. It's got a uh, crochet hook because you use that to crochet the chain that attaches the two ends of the nunchucks together. Um, it has the hemp cord that you use to attach those two things and, um, 
And it has a, uh, I happen to have some extra yarn needles, you know, tapestry needles to sew up. So, um, so that will go to Alison Guiney. The reason I thought it was funny that she won is that she is the author of Fairy Tale Knits, which is a, a collection of gorgeous kids knitting patterns. So it's rather appropriate that it go to her. I was happy about that. I also have, so that's this week's giveaways. I have some new ones to announce, or rather one new one to announce. Uh, a friend of mine who is an extremely talented designer has um, recently put out a collection. Sorry, I'm distracted by finding the right app here. Uh, a friend of mine named Andy Smith, A-N-D-I Smith, has put recently put out a collection of two color cable knits and they are absolutely gorgeous. So it's a collection of seven patterns, I believe. Let me make sure that's correct before I say that for certain. I'll show you the, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, no, it's eight. It's eight patterns all together. And they're also sold individually on Ravelry. But the collection is called Synchronicity. And most of them are cowls. But there are also some hats and a scarf. And um, are there any other types of projects? No, it's, it's five cowls, a scarf, and two hats. And I just wanted to show you, uh, there's a really cool set of tutorials at the beginning that shows you how to cast on for this type of knitting for two color cables. And I love that Andy has her uh, black nail polish in the pictures. Andy is very punk rock <laughs> in all the best ways. So yeah, great tutorials at the beginning about how to do this and you can make these beautiful. So it's cabling and two colors, but she's actually shown me how to do this. Um, and it is not, it is not difficult. If you've done any kind of cabling and color work before, you will not, struggle with this. This wouldn't be the first type of either that I would try necessarily. Like if you've never done cables and never done color work, I don't think this would be what I would start with. But if you have done either of them, you will not find this as complicated as you might think. Isn't that beautiful? That's the scarf, Salt Hill. I'll show you the thing that I want to make, which is one of the hats. Oh, I love this one too while we're, this is another cowl and I love how she's lined it on the inside with some fabric. Although the, actually the op, the, the wrong side of these fabrics is really beautiful. So it's not like it looks bad, but that's the hat I want to make. So cute. I just think it'd be so cool to put together a, a semi-solid with a variegated to work up this hat. Here's a closer picture of what the that cool texture looks like. I just love this collection. It's called Synchronicity and it's by Andy Smith. And she has generously let me give away a copy, a, a PDF copy of the entire collection to one of you. So I'm going to post a thread on the Ravelry group and um, I haven't decided what question I'm going to ask yet, but I will I will ask, ask you to answer a question of some type and you can enter there. And it's all the usual rules that are most podcasters use. Like you need to be a member of the group, one entry per person. And um, yeah, that's it. So that is very nice. I also have some pattern updates for you. I had a pattern come out recently. Patterns of mine, that is. I had a pattern come out recently that I wanted to let you know about. I think I showed, well, I know I showed these gloves before and now the pattern is out. I gave them to my dad for Christmas. That's him in the picture. Uh, about to fire the bow that he gave my son for Christmas. And they're hunting gloves. So you can see uh, probably, especially in the front image. Let me show you another picture here. There we go. Oh no, it actually shows better in the other picture. Here, I'll show you the flat picture. So you can see how the, the thumb and the forefinger are separate and then the rest of it is uh, separated into basically a mitten. So the idea behind these is that you can use them for hunting. 
And um, but you could also certainly use them as texting gloves. If there's a, a kind of conductive thread that you can get, I think Knitpick sells it, for instance, that you could then duplicate stitch onto the finger and then you could use them as texting gloves. Uh, a couple of people had other interesting suggestions for, you know, other other types of uses that these gloves would be good for. And for the moment, I'm blanking on what that would be. But um, but yeah, I just I was thinking of my dad and what he could use. And I thought, you know, a lightweight but really warm. These are made with a yak down. Uh, a lightweight but really warm and fairly close fitting glove would be useful. He really loved them and, you know, very nicely posed for the picture. And it, it actually, it was interesting when I posted the the image onto Ravelry. Uh, well, I posted it into the designer group, the designer forum on Ravelry, which is, you know, obviously a group of knitting and crochet designers. And uh, they have a thread, running thread of for new designs. And so I posted a picture, the first picture where he's, you know, you can see all of him and he's firing the bow. And it, I got some flack for it. Um, there were a number of people who, you know, were clicking the disagree button on it. And I just, I was a little surprised, but then when I thought about it, I realized, okay, maybe I know where this is coming from. So I edited my post and said, you know, I understand that some of you may be vegetarians and vegans and might, or, you know, might in some way object to hunting. So, you know, let me explain to you that my father and, you know, lots of people are very ethical hunters. I mean, given the choice between going to the grocery store and buying factory farmed chicken or having my dad go out into the woods and shoot a deer and and only shoot what he's going to eat, which is what he does, um, and eat that for the rest of the year. <laughs> Honestly, you know, given I have, I have, I have my issues with weapons for sure, but, uh, I, I think he's, I think he's got a, I think he's got a point. So yeah, I just kind of explained all of that. And it turns out as the discussion went on that actually it was sort of less about that for people and more about the fact that they just found it alarming to see a weapon in a knitting pattern photograph, which I thought was really interesting, especially given some of the discussions that we've had about, uh, you know, kind of the, the limited range of style or styling and photography of knitwear and the kinds of things that people actually post as patterns. Um, so I talked about that a little bit and I wasn't really getting a whole lot of purchase. So I don't know, it just kind of, uh, it was interesting. And yeah, I think I'm just going to keep pressing that button, you know? What, what is appropriate to put in a knitting pattern photograph? Well, lots of people need to be knit for and including hunters. So I'm going to keep making stuff for them. Anyways, I have other patterns coming out. <laughs> this one, probably later today, that is Monday. Uh, this is the aftershave hat. You may recall this is the, the hat that I knit. Actually, this is also out of Bijou Basin Ranch yarn. And it is a yak bamboo blend, which is oof so soft and my husband loves this hat um, he shaves his head and so I wanted something especially soft for him so that is uh, I have the comments back from the tech editor I just need to uh, fix a couple of things up and get it all laid out and put it up on Ravelry so this is obviously this could be a men's or a women's hat but I designed it to be it's modeled by my husband in the in the photographs um, my San Juan Batista shawl, which is in originally in the Hitch book, uh, a collection of Hitchcock-inspired patterns, that came out recently as an individual pattern. And then I've got another hat and some mitts coming out soon. I am knitting my fingers off. <laughs> um, beyond that, what I have been knitting, I uh, I have been doing a lot of designing design knitting. So there are a number of things that I cannot show you at the moment because they are in process. But uh, I needed something on New Year's Day that was mindless. Design editing is not mindless. So I, um, because we decided, my son was sick, so we decided to, uh, and it was my husband's birthday, so we did a Lord of the Rings marathon. And I worked on this. 
This is the Dream Stripes shawl um, by, I believe it's Caillou, Caillou Berger, French designer. And um, it's a simple stripe pattern, stockinette stripe pattern for most of it. its triangular shawl. And then there's a, a relatively simple lace pattern at the edge. And I am knitting this in this really cool yarn that it's basically, well, it was originally 400 yards of fingering weight, but split up into four mini skeins. And this is um, by Wooly Wonka Fiber. It's called a transitional skein set. Let's see if you can see that through the bag. Eh, let's get it out. So Wooly Wonka Fiber. And it is called the Transitional Skein Set. The base is this Ceridwin 100% Superwash Wool. And like I said, it's 400 yards altogether, so each mini skein is 100 yards. And the colorway is rolling in the deep. So what I decided to do, I think the original intent is to, you know, kind of start here or, you know, start at one end and work your way to the other. But I thought it would be cool when I saw this striped shawl to kind of take the first and the third and stripe those together and then when I ran out to do the second and the fourth. And I think what I'll do, because this is not quite enough yarn to do that shawl successfully, I think. So I think what I'll do is just work the shawl until I run out of yarn and get the right multiple of stitches for the lace and um, and then work the lace in a different different color, just a different yarn altogether. Haven't decided what that will be yet, but um, yeah, so that's kind of in the background while I'm, you know, when I need something that doesn't require a lot of bandwidth to work on. And then my mom got me some nice things for Christmas. She gave me a gift certificate to Webbs, which was very sweet. And I got a number of things, but I'll show you a couple of them that I thought were fun. This is Fiber Spates, Vivacious 4-ply. It is a also a superwash merino. And this is 400 yards of a fingering weight. I just loved that bright, happy yellow. And I've always wanted to try Fiber Spates yarn. She's a UK based designer. And then I also picked out a Blue Ridge yarn footprints set in the waterfall colorway. This is a also 100% superwash merino. 300 yards for the big skein, and then uh, this is probably 100 yards of the little skein, so it's a heels and toes set. You can use the, the small skein to do the heels and toes and, you know, probably cuff, too. So I thought those were kind of fun. And that's what I've been, what I've been working on. Um, let me talk a little bit about the sort of two bigger topics for the, for today. One of them is um, holiday, the holidays and sort of plans for the new year. I um, took a, a, really a couple of weeks off for the holidays and uh, mainly because my son was out of school and my parents came to visit and my husband was, he, he's a, a professor, so he was home a lot. And, you know, so it's just, it's not really easy to get much work done when... <laughs> when everybody's around. I mean, he was looking after my son, but you know, it just, they were kind of in and out a lot. So it took a couple of weeks off, which was very nice. And, um, but it also made me feel a little bit panicked. <laughs> and, but it did give me some time to think about some of the kinds of things that I want to accomplish in the coming year. And, you know, I'm now about, I think I'm exactly three years in to my new career. Uh, I originally was a history professor and now am, have been a full-time knitting designer and editor and teacher for about three years. And for, for a while, I've been kind of, you know, trying out different things to kind of see, you know, really just trying to make money any way I can, honestly, in some ways uh, in the knitting industry. Um, and finding that I'm gravitating largely toward uh, graphic design for other people in the fiber industry. So I, you know, do a lot of things like uh, 
logos and book layout and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, pattern template design and yarn labels and, you know, anything where people need graphic design work within the fiber industry, that is a lot of what I do. And that fact, that's probably about 75% uh, at least of the work that I do. And, um, and I like it. And the rest of the time I do a lot of knitting design. I've, I do some teaching as well, but that tends to be a little more sporadic. So, um, you know, I was thinking that I kind of feel like I've been pulled in a lot of different directions over the last couple of years. Like I've, uh, I feel a little bit scattershot sometimes. So I've been looking for ways to, to kind of streamline a little bit and feel like I'm moving, you know, just a, a fewer things all in, in one direction. So as luck would have it in October, I think it was, or maybe early November of this year, I went to Kidney, it was November, Kidney Fiber Festival, which is in Bernie, Texas, near here. And, um, Anne Podlasak of Wooly Wonka Fibers, the one who dyed the, the blue yarn that I was just showing you, uh, she was there, with, had a booth there. And I have talked to her online before, but I had never met her in person. But I knew that she was a, an extremely gifted designer and dyer. And so she stopped me to talk to me about an idea that she had about collaborating. And as we continued talking about it at the festival and afterwards, it grew from what I think she originally intended as maybe a short-term collaboration into actually a new business, like we are starting a business together. And um, I'm really excited about it. So this next year is going to be, a lot of it's going to be about getting that started. So the basic idea is that um, we're going to be offering, together, going to be offering uh, photography, graphic design, and editing services to people in the fiber industry. So I'll obviously be the graphic design and editing side, and she um, will be doing the photography stuff. So she is not actually a photographer herself, but she, in a previous life, was a theater stage manager and is an extremely talented uh, stylist and makeup artist she chooses locations really well. She, you know, is brilliant at choosing photographers and models. So she's kind of the organizing force behind the photography. And I will be doing graphic design and editing. And the idea is that, like, say you're a designer and you've written up this pattern and you can't really afford to hire a photographer to just come shoot this one sweater. Like, that can be pretty cost prohibitive. Um... But you really, I mean, if you want that pattern to sell, you really should have a professional photographer shoot it. So um, what we're going to do is you can mail in your stuff to Anne, and she will have uh, quarterly, hopefully soon monthly, photo shoots where, you know, whatever stuff she has on hand, that's what gets shot that month. So it basically cuts down on the costs for each individual designer. And... Um, and then any graphic design and editing work that needs to happen, like tech editing on the pattern, um, laying out the pattern so that it looks nice, uh, doing up any charts and schematics and all that kind of stuff, I will do. So, and then we'll also do the same thing for dyers. So, and, and anybody else, but I think we're mainly thinking of knitting designers and dyers at this point, that, uh, you know, dyers really like to have patterns in their yarns but if you're an indie dyer if you're an individual especially if it's just a sole person business you don't really have any time to be putting together a whole collection of stuff in your yarn so basically you can outsource that to us like we'll set up a whole bunch of designers you send the yarn to us we'll send it out to them for yarn support um, put together a whole cohesive collection get them printed up for you you know, obviously edited and photographed and all of that so that you can have patterns on hand in your yarns to sell at shows. So really, really excited about that. I love working with Anne. She is, um, she has a very similar work style to me and I really like the work that she does. I think it's, the collaboration is going to be great. And I really feel like this just pulls together, like I was saying at the beginning, kind of pulls together a lot of the things that I, uh, have been doing in a kind of haphazard way. It pulls it all together into one thing, which I'm 
excited about. I haven't even told you what the business is called. <laughs> it's called Stitch Definition. And, um, and we, because we were kind of thinking that that stitch definition is sort of a compliment that you use when something, when the fabric of your knitting really makes the stitches pop. So, you know, it seemed to kind of capture all the ways that we could help people focus their ideas and, uh, and really, you know, bring some designs into focus. And uh, yeah, so there is actually a website up now, stitchdefinition.org, that you can look at. It is not complete yet, but it is relatively complete, and it has a contact form and all of that. We are taking clients now. Um, we will officially be launching the business in May or June of this year. We want to launch it at TNNA this summer. So the National Needle Arts Association, which is the big trade show for the business. So that is my, my really big plans for this year. I am also very keen to get back into knitting design more. And as you can tell from what I said earlier, I'm, I'm definitely doing more of that. It's funny, it's, it's hard to convince myself that that's real work, <laughs> which is just, like it is hard work. But convincing myself that during the workday, like between nine and five, that it is okay. In fact, it is imperative to sit on the couch and knit this thing. It's, psychologically, I haven't quite gotten there yet. It's really funny. I feel like I'm slacking off, which is a bad problem to have, right? <laughs> no, it's a good problem to have. So uh, yeah, more more knitting design this year. I'm really interested in doing that. And um and I also just, you know, kind of a smaller scale thing that I'd like to do more. I want to get back to spinning more. That's not smaller scale, but I want to do more of that. And I also want to try a new technique. I'd be interested to hear what new techniques you're interested in trying. That's my question. That is the question I'm going to pose to you in the in the thread for this episode on Ravelry is uh, what your what what new things you'd like to try for this year, what kind of resolutions you have. Uh, mine is that I would really like to try the contiguous sweater construction. Haven't done one of those yet. It's basically a a technique for doing top-down seamless set-in sleeves. And uh, it supposedly has a much neater look than a lot of the existing top-down set-in sleeve styles. So I'm very interested to try that. I know that Hohi Locatelli does a lot of uh, contiguous sweater designs. So perhaps I will try one of hers because I know her her patterns are are well done. So that's my those are my plans for the the coming year. And like I say, I'd be very interested to hear about yours as well. Sorry, I keep I keep looking in the wrong direction. I normally have my I, I record this on my phone, and um, I normally have the camera over here. <laughs> and I realized this week that I need to have it over here, but I keep looking in the wrong direction. So. All right, last thing I want to talk to you about is this book, The Knowledgeable Knitter by Margaret Radcliffe. And I was contacted by a, uh, by a viewer about this book who recommended that I, that I review it. And I contacted Story Publishing and they very kindly sent me a printed copy of it to review. I wish that I, I, I don't have a record of who recommended this to me. I wish I did. I looked everywhere, but I, I'm sorry, I forgot who, or don't, you know, didn't keep track of who recommended this, but I'm so glad you did because this is an excellent book and I hadn't seen it before. It came out in 2014 and it is a, a book that basically walks you through the entire process of uh, planning out a sweater, choosing a sweater pattern, modifying it to suit your measurements, make, taking your measurements, checking along the way to make sure things are going properly, making any modifications that you might need to do, fixing mistakes. It is an incredibly comprehensive primer on how to knit a sweater successfully. And a lot of this would work, a lot of these suggestions would be great for any kind of knitting, but it is specifically focused on sweaters. It is a Long story short, this is a brilliant book, and if you are somebody who has never knit a sweater, 
or knit very few sweaters or knit many sweaters and have been often been frustrated with the way that they've come out, do get this book. It is well worth every penny. It retails for $24.95. And um, to say a little bit about the author first, actually, so I don't leave that out, uh, Margaret Radcliffe is somebody that has been in the knitting industry for a long time. She's been teaching for, I think, at least 20 years. And I would imagine that she's a wonderful teacher because I have a couple of her books already before this, and they are they are models of clarity. And um, everything that you would think you would want a photograph of, there is a photograph of. And, you know, she clearly spent hundreds of hours knitting up swatches to demonstrate to you what she's talking about. And her prose is very clear. I never found, like, I never found that I was having any trouble understanding what she was talking about. So the way this book is organized is kind of like a timeline of knitting through the sweater. So she starts with choosing your pattern, your yarn, and your needles, um, planning the project, modifying the pattern, figuring out shaping and fitting, uh, keeping track of the work in progress while you're knitting it, making sure that it's going along properly, um, making any evaluation and adjustments as you go, uh, seaming the piece or putting it all together if it's in pieces, uh, doing any borders, bindings, and embellishments, and blocking, and all of that. And uh, it's a 300-page book, so it's quite comprehensive. I just want to show you some of my, some examples of some of the great information that is in this book. One thing I love that she talks about is what makes a well-written pattern, which I think is a great thing to, especially now that Ravelry has given us such an array of, I mean, it used to be that the only patterns you could get access to pretty much were professional patterns, patterns by professional designers that had been professionally tech edited and designed and um, and that is not the case anymore, which is both a blessing and a curse, right? That there are now, you know, anybody can design something and put it up on Ravelry, but that means that, you know, you, you need to have a quality filter to, you need to be able to see from the outset before you start knitting, is this gonna be a good pattern or not? And, there, and what she talks about in here is that there are some ways, there are some key signs that you can glean before you even start knitting as to whether this is gonna be a well-written pattern or not. Um, she has some great stuff about measurement and sizing, and I love the tip that she gives up here, because you know you often get the suggestion that uh, if, you want, if you want a sweater that fits you well, find a sweater, a commercially made sweater that you already have, and measure that. And so she says, well, but what if you don't have a sweater like that? What if you don't like any of the sweaters that you have or if you know the fit isn't quite what you're looking for in this particular sweater that you're about to knit so she suggests that like let's say the sweater is a little bigger than you would like the one that you already have just pinch it in a little bit until it looks the way you like and then measure how much you pinched in and subtract that from the commercially made sweater that you have and th that will give you the measurement of your sweater great tip um, lots of great stuff about measuring yourself. There's a, you know, a wonderful section on if you are changing the length of a garment that has a stitch pattern in it, how to adjust for that so that you don't end up with the stitch pattern, you know, kind of ending in a wonky place. Um... Oh, there's, oh gosh, this part is worth, it, it's worth the price of admission alone. There's a whole long case study in here about converting, well, she has a whole section on converting uh, bottom up to top down and vice versa, pieced sweaters into seamless sweaters and vice versa. And she does a whole case study on, you know, okay, let's say your pattern looks like this. Let's say this is the pattern. What would it look like if we rewrote it? for top down and then she explains all of her logic for for doing that it's just brilliant and so helpful um there is 
a really good section on how to figure out whether you need bust darts, and if so, how big to make them and how to make them and you know where to place them, etc. Um, oh, some good stuff about pattern language, like how to interpret it, like what in pattern as established means, uh, how to deal with the dreaded at the same time language, which is, I'm sorry to say, unavoidable. Uh, I love this part too, where she talks about reality checks along the way, which I think is such a, a, a smart thing to think about. It's not just, you know, all the forethought of planning, but as you're going along, are you getting the gauge that you originally got? And do you like the fabric? And are your yarns actually the same dye lot? Or are you having problems there, et cetera, et cetera? And how to fix all of those things. Um, let's see. There's so many things in here to, <laughs> to show you. How to, uh, how to fix when you've got you know, accidental holes, like if you've accidentally done a yarn over. And there is a, oh, just such a great section about what if you miscrossed a cable or, you know, misdid some of your color work, how to use duplicate stitch to fix that. I mean, she also tells you how to let a cable, you know, actually fix a cable, let all the stitches run down and then rework them back up. But she has this really brilliant solution for using duplicate stitch to fake fix the cable. Oh, brilliant. Um, how to knit on, no, that wasn't what I wanted to show you. How to add width to a garment that you've already finished. You've already, it's all done and now you're hosed because it's too small. How to add some width or you've gotten bigger, it happens. Um, how to weave in ends, another thing that a lot of people don't talk about. Um, how to join live stitches to bound off stitches. Um, I mean, it's just, this is a, a reference book par excellence. I mean, just really should be part of your library. I, I'm really glad that I have this, and I've been knitting for 30 years, and I've been designing for almost 10. Um, so, you know, really anybody could get a lot of use out of this book. In fact, this little tab up here, all of these tabs were to show you, this is something that I want to use in an upcoming design because I was thinking, oh, that would be a great way to design the kind of pocket that I want to design. Great book. Margaret Radcliffe, Knowledgeable Knitter. It's from Story Publishing, and I really appreciate them sending a copy of it to me. So... That is this week's episode. And uh, as I say, the technique segment will be at the end. It will either be separate or attached onto the end of this. Um, you can find me online at, everywhere as Dark Matter Knits. And I have a website at darkmatterknits.com. And we have a Ravelry group that you are most welcome to join. There are lots of interesting discussions over there and people showing off their knitting and so on. So please come over and join us. All right, I will see you in a couple of weeks when I will have more exciting things to show you, a new yarn review to share. And uh, until then, take care. Bye. I forgot to tell you, <laughs> because this wasn't in the original episode and I found out about it since then, that uh, the Knitting Daily TV episode, it has not aired yet, but the individual episode is now up for preview and sale. So I will put a link to that in the show notes. And um, yeah, I was really, I haven't even watched it yet because I wanted to go ahead and record this first. But, uh, but yeah, I'm really excited to watch it. All right, I will see you in a couple of weeks. Bye.